Buzz and Tony. We find that students become to us as juniors and they say, I don't know what to do, I'm not going to graduate, I don't have the credits, what do I do? And so, Principal Newell decided to give more direction by having ninth graders pledge to complete high school requirements to the best of their abilities. He hopes students can get the message behind the mock diplomas. One of the things that we've discovered is that we get so many ninth graders that don't really understand that this is their first job. We've got 530 freshmen now. The goal is three years from now in 2014 and in June, we have 530 graduates. This was Hawthorne High School's first ever mock graduation. For HCTV, I'm Sergio Munoz. If you would like more information about Hawthorne High School's programs and curriculum, visit www.hhscougars.org. A Women Veterans Symposium was recently held in honor of active duty service women, men, and veterans. The event was open to all job seekers and was sponsored by the Employment Development Department of the State of California and the South Bay Workforce Investment Board at the Hawthorne Memorial Center. Panel discussions were held and vets were able to obtain services. Employment, educational and training opportunities were also available. When we return, we'll show you where some teachers are being served pies, but they're not for eating. Honey, would you get me some ice cream? Ice cream? Please. Yeah. Thank you. Some things you just can't do without. It happens every night, all across America. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, the Marines. Does peace really have a chance within our lifetime? At Rotary, we believe it does. We've created programs at universities around the world, dedicated solely to teaching peace to a new generation. There's a new symbol for peace, Rotary. Two words for you, pop quiz. Ready? Name any funny movie, a drama, Name a mystery. And one more thing. Name the movie your kids saw today in science class. Know what really matters. Know about your kid's school. And know about your kid. Find out 100 ways to know more, do more. You're watching Hawthorne Community Television, Channel 22. Quality programming for the city of Hawthorne. Hawthorne High School's Knights and Diconian Club held a fundraiser to help raise money to put an end to a paralyzing illness. Catherine Chen has more. This looks like a pie, but it's not going to be eaten. For $2, students at Hawthorne High School bought these whipped cream pies to throw at their teachers. It's all to raise money for End Polio Now, Rotary International's mission to raise $200 million to eradicate polio by June 30th, 2012. The cause was assigned to Knights and Diconians members by their club supervisor. We all we had to do was create um, a fundraiser idea and we came up with throwing pies in teachers' faces because a lot of students wanted to, <laughs> wanted to get away to get back at the teachers. It's great that we're doing, uh, you know, the kids have organized something to, to raise money for a cause. It's even more important that the kids are conscious that there are other people that need help in the world and, and uh, I think it, build, it builds a community here on campus and, and here in the Hawthorne community as well. The pies can come flying at high speeds. You don't know how hard they're going to come, you don't know where they're going to land, so it was, uh, 
especially when they were double teaming, triple teaming, quadruple teaming. So it was, it was fun, but a little intense. PE teacher Tiffany Johnson was one of the most targeted teachers, but smiled through it all. Hey, I thought it was fun. I was glad that all my softball players came in and joined. I help coach softball here, and I'm glad they came in to support such a wonderful cause. 100% of the profits will go towards the effort to end polio. For HCTV, I'm Catherine Chen. For more information on Rotary International's End Polio Now Challenge, visit www.rotary.org backslash endpolio. With the ever-evolving workforce, many say that education is now more important than ever. Sergio Munoz explains how Hawthorne and Lusinger High Schools are preparing students for their academic journeys. Centinella Valley Union High School District recently held their second annual high school fair. Lusinger and Hawthorne High Schools teamed up to present their academic offerings, clubs and activities to parents in the community with middle school graduates enrolling in high school. Ryan Smith, principal of Lusinger High School, is excited for the future. We're one of the most improved schools in the area and we don't see that trend stopping anytime soon. We plan on keep getting better every, every year. There were over 20 booths representing the school's clubs and activities, including a crime scene investigation program. The vision of the schools is to have all graduates attend a four-year college or university. When you look at our program from top to bottom, it's all about getting kids to college and helping them be successful there. Students are looking towards a bright future, and leaders in education are making improvements to accommodate the younger generations. We not only are changing things academically, changing th opportunities for students, we're also going to be opening up brand new state-of-the-art classroom buildings. There's a lot of interesting activities here. And the teachers are just so active and funny. And there's a lot of cool classmates here as well. Really nice programs. Jessica is graduating from Lenox Middle School and is interested in attending Hawthorne High School. Her mother stands beside her in support of this important step in her daughter's life. I hope she make a, the good decision for her. I'm trying to stay behind her all the time. And standing behind Hawthorne High School is Principal Mark Newell who is confident schools within the Centinella Valley School District are great choices. Well, we feel our academic programs are as good as, good as any in the South Bay area. And, um, you know, past thoughts of people maybe haven't been so, but we're trying to change people's minds to show them that Losinger High School, Hawthorne High School, and Lawndale High School are three of as good of schools as you can find. Hawthorne High and Losinger High School run six academies combined with schools of international business, performing and visual arts, criminal justice, and more. For HCTV, I'm Sergio Munoz. If you would like to be a part of either of these academies, you can visit Hawthorne High School's website at www.hhscougars.org and Losinger High School's website at www.losinger.org. Harvesting healthier students through good eating habits and exercise is what the Network for a Healthy California has been promoting for almost a decade. Now they're introducing a new pilot program to four elementary school campuses, which includes healthier lunches, physical fitness, and health education. HCTV reporter Sophia Pop has part one of this two-part series. Studies show that one out of every three kids is predicted to develop type 2 diabetes, while minorities face a bigger challenge. For Latinos and African Americans, one out of every two kids is predicted to develop this condition. This is why the Network for a Healthy California has partnered with the Alliance for a Healthier Generation to introduce the Healthy Schools program to promote healthy school environments. And here at Hawthorne School District, we are so committed to that goal of encouraging our children to be healthy and strong so they're ready and prepared. All competing schools must meet eight requirements, which include policy, school meal programs, competitive foods and beverages, health education, physical activity, school employee wellness, physical education, and before and after school programs. Schools have to show proof the program is having a positive impact on their campuses and if they meet all the criteria, they will garnish recognition at the national level with a gold, silver or bronze medal. We're focusing a little bit more aggressively on four schools, four elementary schools this year um, to adopt this kind of framework that is proposed by the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. And four schools uh, in Hawthorne are going toward for bronze level recognition. This year, Zella Davis, Ramona, Eucalyptus, and York Elementary Schools are taking on the challenge. 
who would like to try the awesome asparagus appetizer? Here at York Elementary School, this class is already hard at work. Pour it around the whole thing. Good job, Jose. Okay, so Every month, third grade here, teacher Ann Chance introduces her students to the harvest sections. of the month. We try the delicious trio of asparagus and, and black beans and dressing, and then we did a little lesson on asparagus and the health benefits. Students must describe. Everyone take a deep breath. How does it smell? And write what they see and feel. They also incorporate a good dose of energizing exercises called jamming minutes. Teeny, teeny, teeny. Now backwards. I liked it because it got me focused on the subject that we were going to do next. They enjoy it. It gets them out of their chairs and it breaks up the monotony and they, they feel healthier. They feel more alive and more focused and actually so do I. And Chan says she's seen a lot of changes in her students as they are now making better food choices that do not include cookies or chips. I see them going for the vegetables more and the fruits more because not only do they realize now how good they taste, but they know all the health benefits that go along with them. Hawthorne School District board member Dr. Eugene Crank says this is a good investment that will empower parents and will make a difference for future generations. And the good thing about this program is that as the kids get older and they go to the higher level schools, they'll carry these, these things with them, That's, which is the key of getting it incorporated as early as possible. Signs like these can be seen all over campus to promote healthy eating and physical fitness. On part two of my report, we'll visit the school cafeteria to see how they're improving the school lunches and also we'll talk to parents to see how they're also getting involved in this health initiative as they get ready to go for the bronze. That was Sophia Pop reporting. In the next City News, we'll show you part two and three of the pilot program. For more information about the Network for a Healthy California, visit www.networkforahealthycalifornia.net. We'll keep it right here on Channel 22 for these future City News stories. Job seekers meet with potential employers at the Sibwib Job Fair. Then, the community takes a walk around the block to raise funds for music, arts, and nutrition programs for the Wiseburn School District. And the City of Good Neighbors celebrates Earth Day while also getting useful information at the Service Provider and Resources Fair. Well, that does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310-349-1630. We'll leave you now with more highlights from the 22nd Annual Parks and Recreation Foundation Golf Tournament. We'll see you next time.